Good evening and thank you for joining us on Y254 Updates. My name is Patricia Murioki. Talk to us on all our social media platforms. That is at Y254 TV. You can also reach me at Patricia Murioki. Tonight we're going to be talking about a very interesting and rather very sensitive topic. We've all probably heard of the recent uh, rise of teenage pregnancies in the country. That is probably since COVID-19. And to help us talk about this topic tonight is we have two very amazing uh, ladies who I really um, trust and based on the interactions that I've had with them that they are well equipped to help us tackle literally everything teen pregnancy and we, ho we have Saida Hali who is a feminist activist and a policy analyst. We have Emma Nyabisi who is an advocate, uh, gender-based violence and a human rights activist. So these people are going to help us tonight to really understand who do we blame. Are we even supposed to be talking about who is responsible? Ad is it the right way when we talk about 4,000 probably for example in Machakos County where we talk about more than 4,000 girls impregnated during this period are we really supposed to be just talking about that where are the people responsible for these pregnancies so we're going to have these people help us talk about that tonight Remember, you can be part of this discussion by sharing your opinions. What do we think should be done? Uh, probably what do we do as a country to make sure that we get to curb this? But before we get to that discussion, we'd like to have a look at uh, probably the current numbers as far as COVID-19 is concerned in the country. And today, based on the press briefing that was given by the CAS Ministry of Health, Dr. Masi Mwangangi, 254 people have tested positive for COVID-19. Uh, 41 patients were discharged today and two people are sadly two people succumbed to the virus which now brings the total numbers uh, in the country has 5,206 that is the total number of confirmed cases in the country we have 1,823 has a total number of recoveries in the country and we also have 130 as a total number of deaths thank you very much for finding the time to join us tonight I believe you've all seen uh, all this information has been circulating mm -hmm. uh, on social media. We've had uh, different media uh, houses cover these uh, stories. The first thing I'd like to ask Emma, what do you think about these numbers? To you, is this a reality or uh, is there someone who sat down and cooked? Let us first start <laughs> by ascertaining if these numbers are really true. Emma. I uh, thank you, Patricia, for, for the opportunity. You're welcome. Uh, first, I think we shouldn't be asking whether it is real or not real, mm -hmm. the first thing we should ask, mm -hmm. what, what is not going on mm -hmm. with our, our teens? Okay. If it, it is true, what are we supposed to do mm -hmm. so that we can prevent the same? Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be asking whether these numbers are there or not because teen pregnancy is an issue in our country. Okay. And we need to solve it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Saida Ali, you're a feminist uh, activist. Mm -hmm. What came into your mind. What is the first thing that you thought about mm. when you saw these numbers? Mm. So just building up on what Emma said about mm. the, the numbers, I think it's important for us to recognize mm -hmm. that actually teen pregnancies, this is a pandemic. Yeah. It's been going on. Mm -hmm. What uh, COVID-19 has done mm -hmm is really to blow the lead off mm -hmm. the problem okay. uh, based on pre-existing uh, problems that mm -hmm. have not been resolved, pre-existing inequalities that have perhaps pushed um, girls in certain situ into certain situations. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we like to bury our, our heads in the sand mm -hmm. when it comes to, to teenage pregnancies and when it comes to situations of adolescent girls and boys, mm -hmm. right? So some of the things that have come to my mind are something you started talking about. Mm -hmm. Where are the 4,000 plus yeah. men mm -hmm. or boys responsible. responsible for these pregnancies? That's mm -hmm. number one. Number mm -hmm. two, there's been no empathy at all shown on the girls. Mm -hmm. when, when things have gotten so bad, Everyone has politicized issues, including the data. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a lot of, it's, it, this country has become a bit of a moral circus mm -hmm. when it comes to just blaming, shifting goalposts and things like that. But mm -hmm. very little mm -hmm. has been spoken about where are these girls, what's going to happen to them, mm -hmm. what kinds of strategies mm -hmm. need to be put in place now that they are in that situation 
to address how they move forward in a humane way okay. and, and to also address some, some layers of what might be uh, the problem that mm -hmm. I'm, I'm hoping we can get to, to speak oh, oh. about that. Okay, yeah. Saida, you've mentioned you've talked something about blaming. Yeah. With the numbers that we've seen, mm -hmm. are we do we even do justice by probably trying to see who do we blame? Because I was having a conversation with someone and they made a comment where they said, mothers should talk to their daughters mm -hmm. and i asked myself at what point are we going to say mothers and fathers should also talk mm -hmm. to their sons mm -hmm. so what is your opinion as mm -hmm. far as who is to blame on this matter is concerned mm -hmm. That particular example actually uh, brings out the, the, the discourse around gender inequalities and parenting responsibilities mm -hmm. and how there is shifting of goalposts when it comes to who is responsible when a child, whether boy or girl, mm -hmm. has been uh, or has found themselves in a situation that is tricky. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of times, and some of the debate we've seen going on has, has been around mothers should be talking to, to girls. Their daughters. But actually, it should be parents, both mothers and fathers, have a responsibility to talk to both girls and boys. Mm -hmm. Because then when we are saying they should talk to girls, we're also forgetting about it takes two to tango. Mm -hmm. So there is a boy or there is a man mm -hmm. that has been uh, involved in this situation. Okay. And, and the reason I'm making the, the distinction between boys and, and men is in, in the latter, these are adult men and we do know there are situations of sexual exploitation mm -hmm. that have also contributed to these numbers, there are cases of of, uh, of sex that was non-consensual yeah. or where uh, defilement of rape may have happened. Mm -hmm. And so the problem of doing a blanket blaming is that it does not begin to get to the point because if, if a girl says that she didn't consent and points to a situation where she was raped, mm -hmm. it is important to investigate and to have those people responsible mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, arrested mm -hmm. and, and brought to book. And okay. that's part of the debate that is getting lost in mm -hmm. this all noise around what I'm calling the, okay. the, the moral hula balloon. Okay. <laughs> Before this conversation ends, I'm going, uh, I would also like us to touch on consent and really understand, uh, do these girls even really understand what consent means? Are they even aware that I'm supposed to give consent before, before probably someone does one, two, three to me? Mm -hmm. But before I get to that, I'd like to bring you Emma on this. We know that schools have been closed since uh, March 17th due to COVID-19. Uh, all these cases, most of them, the rise has happened when we have our students at home. Mm -hmm. We have our girls, when we have our boys at home. Do we say that our teachers are more responsible than our parents? I think no. Mm -hmm. Our teachers are not more responsible than our parents. Mm -hmm. Our parents may have loved to talk to the kids about sex, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean they're irresponsible in, in this subject. Mm -hmm. The only thing we need to ask ourselves it is how are these parents going to talk to these children because it has been a stigma from time in memorial, mm -hmm. parents are not willing to mm -hmm. talk to their children about sex. Mm -hmm. So the issue is, how are we going to put to let these parents to talk to their children? Mm -hmm. So for example, we had um, a meeting like, uh, on, on March, mm -hmm. whereby we talked to children at the same time parents. Mm -hmm. You put them together. Tell them that parents, mm -hmm. you need to speak to your children about sex. Mm -hmm. And children, you need to open up mm -hmm. to your parents about sex. Okay. At the same time, the, uh, the current crisis happened when children were behind their doors. Mm -hmm. So there are many other issues that come up. Okay. We have social, we have economic, we mm -hmm. have legal. Mm -hmm. So for example, economic, you find that Parents are suffering. They don't have enough food for their children. Mm -hmm. And you find that these parents will force their children, let's say the girls, to go out there and fend for themselves. Mm -hmm. In this case, they'll go and have commercial sex or just have sex for someone to provide for them. Okay. So this is a big issue that we need to speak about. If our government could be able to provide for the families right now, mm -hmm. whereby the parents are forced to send their daughters out there to go and fend for themselves, mm -hmm. it is an issue that we need to cover. Okay. Uh, before we get to the consent, um, 
uh, question. Uh, teenage pregnancies had been fueled by rape, defilement, uh, poverty, early marriages, uh, mm. peer influence, drug abuse, and lack of youth friendly health services. Mm. Saida would like to bring you on these. All these causes mm -hmm. that are triggers of teenage pregnancies, mm -hmm. what can we do about them to make sure that we don't fight a, a young girl mm -hmm. just because there's one thing that they could not afford or this uh, person who feels like they're up here and they have, they have overpowered this girl, mm -hmm. do not take advantage of them. What do we do about all these before now we now come to really understand the yeah. consent? Yeah. You know, on this matter, I've, I've been saying to a few friends mm -hmm. that we really need to go back to basics mm -hmm. as a society. Okay. And part of the basics, and just to take, take away the whole issue around uh, rape, for example, mm -hmm. it's very clear mm -hmm. where rape has happened, mm -hmm. um, you know, the criminal justice system needs, and, and here I mean, from you know from the police they have a role in this in terms of making arrests there mm -hmm. is you know investigations that need to to happen mm -hmm. you know up to the point of prosecution mm -hmm. and things like that like this is not even a debate we should we should be negotiating about mm -hmm. where rape has happened or where sexual exploitation has happened really the law needs to kick in mm -hmm. and we need to be able to uh, to support and we to mean everyone mm -hmm to be able to support what has been put in place. Uh -huh. Having said that, again on the issue of reproductive health matters, mm -hmm. and, and I want to say here, sexual health and rights matters as well. Yeah. Uh, because sometimes when we talk about reproductive health, for adolescent girls and boys, they may not sometimes identify so much with some of the things being said because they think, oh, you know, if it is just about reproduction, that's not why I want to listen to this discussion. Mm -hmm. But when we think about it from uh, a, a rights perspective, then we begin to, to talk about some of the things that you're saying relate to consent mm -hmm. and, and having parents and everyone who is, say, a guardian understand what those basics are around teaching children. Mm -hmm. But in terms of what we have as a country, we have lots of policies mm -hmm. and, you know, that are supportive of this, of this issue and, and uh, the situation of adolescent uh, boys and girls. For instance, we have the Adolescent Sexual and Reproductive Health Policy mm -hmm. in this country. It was passed in 2015. Um, it needs a bit of a review, uh, you know, so that then we can make sure the gaps that are not addressed are, you know, are, are put in place. The problem is implementation. Okay. The other one, and it's very recent, is the Reproductive Health Care Act, you know, 2019. Very recent, right? Um, part of the current debate is that it really needs to be um, to be looked at, to be reviewed, and that discussion is already happening, so that then some of the gaps, especially around comprehensive sexuality education, are addressed, and so that then what we propose happens is that um, adolescent uh, boys and girls have the information and they have access to it. So when you look at those policies, mm -hmm. then you know that from a Ministry of Health point of view, we're really on the right path mm -hmm. because then the policies have been put in place. All the right. problem with this country is implementation. Mm -hmm. The political will, the putting resources down that are really underlined for making sure that that is happening. Uh, and so then it, it, it would be it would be important to begin to understand the roles that we have as parents. I am a parent mm -hmm. of a daughter and that I do not I do not want to get to a point where I say the teachers or the, my child's teacher mm -hmm. has the prime and complete responsibility mm -hmm. to be doing this. I have a role as a parent and mm -hmm. that's why I'm talking about going back to basics. Mm -hmm. Going back to basics means, Patricia, that some of these parents who are struggling they don't know what to say mm -hmm. to the children. Okay. So there needs to be some sort of education for parents as well. Mm -hmm. And I just want to acknowledge that we have a lot of um, non-governmental organizations that are doing this work, but the demand is so high. So this is where now government and political will comes in and making sure that there are resources to ensure that there are facilities where 
uh, adolescents and, and youth can go. It's friendly for them to be given information because having access to information can save lives. Mm -hmm. It's not about I'm um, getting the information so that I can go and exploit yeah. or, you know, and uh, explore with my body. But this is part of the moral debates that I was referring to. When we say we shouldn't give information to children or to adolescents because people are saying they're much too young and they're going to start uh, engaging in sexual activity. Research has shown that where comprehensive sexuality education exists, there is delayed sexual activity. Oh. Why? Because they have an understanding <laughs> of what it takes, what choices to make and things like that. Okay. Uh we're going to be taking a very short break, but before we go for that break, Emma, I would like to bring you on the consent. Do you think, uh, as an advocate, do you think a 12-year-old, a 13-year-old, a 14-year-old girl really understands what consent means? And as you address that, also look at, uh, please tell us, how does the law protect these uh, teenagers as far as consent is involved? Thank you, Patricia, for that question. That question has been in our in our discussion for long, mm -hmm. even the, our government wanted to reduce uh, the consent to yeah, age 60, yeah. to 16, yeah. which doesn't even make sense. Mm -hmm. Yes, a 12-year-old doesn't understand what consent is. Mm -hmm. If you give me uh, something that I need, let's say you take me out mm -hmm. and you tell me I want to have sex, I'll just allow it because I don't understand. The only thing I know you have gifted me mm -hmm. and what you want from me, it is sex. Mm -hmm. So for a 12-year-old to understand what is what is consent, mm -hmm. it is hard. It's for a parent to sit down and tell them, if someone wants to buy something for you, tell them no, if they want se sexual gratification after that. Mm -hmm. Under the Sexual Offense Act, it mm -hmm. is clear that the age of consent is 18, mm -hmm. and it should remain that. Mm -hmm. The only thing now it is we come uh, into, it is about when uh, teenagers get to have sex, that is between peers, okay. what happens after that? Because mm -hmm. if a 17-year-old gets to have sex with a 16-year-old, mm -hmm. what are we going to do about that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because these are all of them, their minors. Yeah. You know, into uh, crucify a boy and let the girl walk free mm -hmm. because even the girl has had sex with a minor. Mm -hmm. So there, it's a, another question we are supposed to discuss about. Mm -hmm. about then also, if a 19-year-old gets to have sex with a 16 or a minor, mm -hmm. what about uh, statutory, uh, statutory rape? Mm -hmm. Should we introduce this? Because yes, a 16, a 17 might have uh, something to do about uh, consent. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about that, it's now when we will think about statutory rape, where mm -hmm. you find that the Western world have s such an law, mm -hmm. but we don't have it. Mm -hmm. So we. You see, most men in our in our society think that uh, the Sexual Offence Act crucifies them, mm -hmm. makes them to go to in, uh, to jail for having sex, mm -hmm. consensual sex with a, a lady, mm -hmm. and this is not the case. Mm -hmm. So we need to re re revise our laws mm -hmm. and make sure that it accommodates every every detail mm -hmm. that. It's happening in our society. Okay. Uh, yes. We're going to be uh, taking a very short break, but when we come back, we'll try to look at at what age really should parents, uh, should teachers probably talk about sex education. We're going to be taking a very short break. Don't go far away. We'll be right back. For updates and if you're just joining us we, tonight we're talking about the rise of teenage pregnancy this is based on the recent rise of the cases uh, since we had um, COVID-19 since our, we have our, our kids at home or rather we have students at home and we're trying to just see what can we do uh, we're trying to see what really needs to be done to make sure that these things really do not happen again we're trying to talk about consent try and evaluate do really uh, probably 12 year olds 13 year olds or teenagers rather really understand what consent means and before we get to the sex education probably at what age uh, probably we should have uh, uh, discussions as far as sex is concerned with our uh, with teenagers or even at what age should we do that uh, that is uh, Ezekiel Mutua the CEO of the, the uh, film classification board said that 
the 4,000 uh, pregnancies in Machakos County mm -hmm. should be blamed on the Machakos musicians because they they tend to have uh, his argument was <laughs> they have very uh, their names probably their stage names are very vulgar the type of content and we also have social media mm -hmm. We have social media, we have the internet, uh, probably sometimes even parents don't know what the kids are doing on those phones because these days we have uh, kids as young as seven years uh, being given a smartphone. So what are your thoughts on that side? I, I, I think it's problematic to blame, to, to draw blame on one particular issue. Uh -huh. there's, there's a number of contributing factors mm -hmm. um, and and one of them could be that super exposure mm -hmm. through you know internet mm -hmm. using phones and and tablets and all manner of things that parents are able to uh, to ap afford for their children mm -hmm. but part of why I'm saying we shouldn't be too quick to to apportion blame or to look at just a single factor is because some of the children that are affected are actually from very poor mm -hmm. uh, families, mm -hmm. right? So the socioeconomic factors that Emma was talking about uh, come into play. So for them, there, there is no even uh, access to some of these things. Mm -hmm. For me, it just goes back to the issue of access to information. Mm -hmm. And at what point we begin to uh, to give information and in what measure mm -hmm. to our children and this is why some of us talk about age appropriate uh, comprehensive sexuality education mm -hmm. and when need arises mm -hmm. the reason i introduced the issue of need is because you'd asked a question about a 12 year old yeah. whether a 12 year old can really consent, yeah. right? But a 12 year old will have already started developing. And so as a parent, you should be able to take advantage of those moments, the opportunities that, uh, that present themselves to offer information to children. So there are children who may ask certain questions and they are five years old. Mm -hmm. For me as a parent, I shouldn't just you know, hash it and say, oh, you know, she is five or mm -hmm. he is five, so I'm not going to, uh, talk, about it to talk about it now. But take uh, advantage of that opportunity being presented and provide information that is to the measure of the understanding of that five-year-old. Okay. So that then when that child is 12 years old, what you've been doing is a build up from where you started, but not to give misinformation at five years mm -hmm. and then at seven, you, you start changing and say, you know, it's actually not that, okay. it is this. So it's important to, um, to give information, to take advantage of different opportunities that present themselves, to even start talking about consent even without talking about sex. Okay. And consent here means having children understand the boundaries around their body, mm -hmm. right? Okay. And, and naming body parts for what they are and understanding that they can say no and it should be respected. And you as a parent should be able to respect when your child says no to you mm -hmm. and perhaps then have dialogue around mm -hmm what it is mm -hmm. that both sides or what the argument is if there is a difference of opinion mm -hmm. and mark you this doesn't have to be about sex mm -hmm. but this is what will build on to the conversation around what emma was saying that at 12 by that 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 age then that girl or that boy would be able to say but i don't think this is something i want to get involved in okay. why because from the age of three or five when they ask a question around should someone really touch me then the response that was given was the truth in terms of understanding the boundaries of what their body is okay yeah uh because of time i would, I would like us to talk about now we have, let's talk about the, uh, probably the teenagers who have access to certain information online. Uh, the other day, the cabinet secretary, uh, Ministry of Education, said that uh, the, uh, pornography sites should be, uh, should be banned because these are also something that triggers uh, all these like immoral uh, behaviors. Emma, yes. how can parents, what roles now do parents have to probably try and regulate? We know, yes, the children have access to the information, but how can the parent control what really the child gets to probably assess online? Or how do they regulate to make sure that we don't just say, we just don't throw them in a pool where there is everything, but we don't really tell them this is what you will, this is what you do, this is, this is what you don't, Emma. Thank you. Looking at that 
question, you find that there are many issues that raise from there. You find that one, uh, if you, you will say that we'll start limiting what the children are viewing at our, our houses, mm -hmm. It means these children will find opportunities. They will find the panya route mm -hmm. to go and access this information. Mm -hmm. As we have said, like uh, Saida has said, has said, we need to start educating our children mm -hmm. from an early age about sex and about the information they gain out there. When you talk about, uh, let me cut you. When you talk about early age, what age really should we introduce sex education? What age would you say is appropriate? Let's say a, a kid, a, a five-year-old comes and asks you, mm -hmm. Mama, what, what do you have here? Why mm -hmm. don't I have it? Mm -hmm. Mama, uh, Mama you, you, have, you are wearing skirts, but Daddy is wearing trousers. trousers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't have to tell them, because trousers are supposed to be trousers. Mm -hmm. That's when you need to come up and tell them okay. it is because your father is a man. Mm -hmm. And men do what? Wear trousers? Because, because of, of A, B, C, D. Yeah, okay. And me as a lady, I have boobs. If it's a, a girl, you tell her, one day you will also have them, mm -hmm. them like me. Uh -huh. Don't bash away the kid and tell them. We'll talk about that later. Ten years, uh, when you are for eight years, mm -hmm. ten years, that's when we are going to talk about it. Okay. No, start from that point. Mm -hmm. That's when you start giving them information. If you, you are you're going to hide this information from them, mm -hmm. they're going to get it from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Let's say you give your child a, a phone, a smartphone, you may regu regulate it, but they'll find a way on how to to remove all your re regulations or and maybe have access elsewhere uh, and find access somewhere else. Okay. So you find that you need to tell your your children what they're supposed to get. If they see pornography, tell them why they are not supposed to watch pornography. Yeah. Why they should not watch certain songs. Okay. Why they should so that they are able to grow up knowing what is right and what is wrong. Okay. But if you just bash children and tell them, you, you wait for this age, the children will find ways to, to do what oh. they want. Okay. Also talk about when they reach a certain age, tell them, if it's, it's, it's a daughter, tell them, boys will always see you attractive. Mm -hmm. But you are the ones to, who is supposed to refrain or say no when they come close to you, not, not close, but when they start t talking about sex okay. to you, like right. having sex, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. T talk to them in such a manner they are able to understand. Okay, yeah. uh, so time is really not on our side. I think we'll create more time and really have this discussion because it's something that I believe we can literally get to midnight while talking about. But thank you very much, ladies, for really finding the time to share your thoughts uh, about this topic. And all I would say is that as parents, as siblings, as the society, we all have a role to play. If you notice something that is not right that is happening, please make sure that you, you are able to speak about it. If you are at a position to probably talk to young men and talk to young ladies about probably sex education, about certain things or uh, information that we believe is very important, please do so. And as we continue staying at home, let us continue making sure that we are also as parents or as guardians knowing what is my daughter doing, what is my son doing. Thank you very much for joining us. My name is Patricia Morioki. Do have yourselves a very good night.